Hello YouTubers and welcome to this video we're going to take a look at some firmware updates that have been happening on the FLIR E4 thermal camera. Now I happen to have two in my hands because I've got one on loan from a friend via eBay and the reason I'm posting this video is when I was checking it out and I had them side by side I noticed there was at least one additional feature and some changes to the menu system on his one versus mine. And obviously that was due to a firmware update. So what I'm going to do is show you that because if you happen to own an E4 and you haven't, like me, bothered to update the firmware, the additional changes might be worth doing. So my one happens to have version 1.15.5. This one has 2.1.0. There is a 2.3.0 that's been released. So I'm going to upgrade mine in this video so we can see what changes it makes. Now let's just quickly discuss the hack which has been done to the E4, which I think has made the E4 quite a popular thermal camera now. Now I have opted not to do the hack because I wanted mine to remain a reference one for any reviews or videos that I did. If I owned two of them, I would perhaps seriously consider doing the hack to see the enhancements. As it turned out a couple of years ago when the E series were released, so I think there's the E4, E5, E6, I forget the numbers, but the E series which got to E8. The E4 comes in at around $1,000, which it does now. The E8, which has got the higher resolution. So that is 320 by 240. That was selling for $6,000. It now sells for four. Now, Mike at that point in time who got this, opened it up, took a look inside, realized that they were using the same microbolometer. So the hardware in the E4, right through the series, right up to the E8, was exactly the same. It was merely being hamstrung or disabled by the firmware. So you can do a firmware hack and turn your $1,000 E4 into a $4,000 E8. So, but this isn't about that, I just make you aware of that. Now, in the pro just prior to filming and preparing for this video, I've just realized that the one I've got on loan looks like there might be a slight issue on the microbolometer, but that I'll show you on the bench. So let's get there and I'll go through the differences between the two of them. So here we go, I've got them side by side. This is my one with the older firmware and this is the one I've got on loan. And just as I was kind of hoping to kind of demonstrate the issue with the one I saw prior to filming, I see it's gone. So I wonder whether it was a software issue. There was a strange anomaly on the screen with the color grading um, of the thermal image and that is now gone. So I'll just have to keep an eye on that to see if that does come back. But for all intents and purposes, I've not seen any major differences in terms of the general performance when these two are put side by side. It's once we get into the menus and one additional feature which Flair have added with the firmware update. Ah, uh, my goodness. So here we go. Just as I thought that anomaly had disappeared, it depends on the body or what you're looking at. You can see that kind of line which almost looks like a scratch. And I think that's a flaw on the microbolometer. So that's definitely there. Sometimes you see it depending on what you look at and sometimes you don't. So this may have to go back to the seller uh, because it looks like it's a hardware problem. But anyway, the only first obvious thing that you'll note on the screen, which I missed when I first switched it on, is if you have a look at the display up here showing the temperature, they've separated the degree C, your unit, versus this one where it's all in a single black frame. So that is the one subtle difference on the display there. If we go into the menus, I'll just show you the version prior to showing you some of the changes in the one feature which has changed. You'll have to excuse some of the reflection from my camera, but you'll see this one's 1.15.5 and this one's 2.1.0. So this one's mine, this is, this is the one on loan. The first thing you'll see when you get to the main menu which has changed is on mine I've got this align distance where you set the visual camera versus a thermal image to get that MSX or edging technology to line up correctly because you have an error of parallax or parallax error that you want to cater for. That you have to go into this main menu over here and fiddle with that. It's a it's a bit long-winded. I noted that when I initially did the review. They've improved that on the E4 with this 
2.1.0, but I think better improvements could be made. We'll see if 2.3 does that. So let me just show you what they've done. From the main screen now, if you push on the center button to bring up the system, and if you go to your image mode, from there you can see on the later firmware, you can go and select your distance. So you don't have to go down into that main setting screen, you can do it from up here. So you can enter on that and go and set your distance. Now, I don't understand why they've got an opportunity from where you're using the camera, you've got the up and down on this key, which isn't being used. And I noted this when I first reviewed it. They should just add that feature over there. Like for instance, you could perhaps add emissivity, although it might be a risk. You don't want to change your emissivity without intentionally wanting to do it. But your parallax or that distance to get things to line up could be done on this key instead of having to go into a menu. But going back to the image mode, the one big thing you'll see, so that's a change. And then you'll see you've got another setting over here. You've got your MSX, which brings in your edging. And if I go into the kind of imaging options, we've got thermal MSX, which is this edging technology. So this is a very clever way to kind of give you uh, insight into what you're looking at because you've got a low resolution picture. So on these ones, it's 80 by 60, although the microbolometer is a 340 by 260. And you can see that horrible apparition over there. But now if I just go back to pure thermal, you can see how the noise and the resolution, you cannot see what you're looking at. You would require a higher resolution picture to do that. And that's the beauty of FLIR's MSX technology. So you go across and now they've got something called thermal blending. And what they're doing, you can see they're bringing in a bit of a thermal, a normal image from the normal imaging camera mixed in with a thermal image. And this is what Fluke have been doing on their cameras. If you then go to the other one, you just get the normal image. So they've taken this kind of thermal blending, I think Fluke call it, call it image blending, and that is the additional feature which might be worth upgrading to. And of course that functionality as well. We'll just pull out for a better view to see what it looks like. So here we go. This is what my bench looks like just with a pure thermal image, no kind of camera trickery the low resolution thermal image. If I change it to the MSX technology, you can see how you get the nice edging because they're making use of the visual camera to bring in that edging. And now you can see as I switch between the plain thermal image and I go to the blending, it's not edging so much as just bringing part of the visual camera in to see what you're seeing behind. And you can change the intensity. So if you go up and down on the kind of button over here, you can change how much of the visual picture you see versus bringing in the thermal image. And that's the same on the Fluke thermal cameras. So the interesting thing here is there's obviously no patent on that blending. I presume Fluke didn't bring in a patent or else FLIR wouldn't be using it. I do know that the MSX technology, uh, FLIR do have a patent on that which they guard because they're the only ones by rights which are able to use it with a few certain interesting technicalities about that. Hopefully at some stage I'll be able to talk about that and I can have a separate video on that. So there we go, that's that blending feature. Now the one thing I want to note is that on the FLIR site, I've gone and downloaded the 2.3.0. As far as I can tell, there's no change log explaining the changes, the features or the bug fixes between these firmware versions. I sent an email to FLIR yesterday I've not heard back from them. If I do, I'll annotate and post a link below to where that change log is or describe the changes I say in the annotation. But as far as I can tell, no change log. So it's only by kind of uh, updating and seeing the differences that you can tell what's happening. So let's go through the process of updating my camera to 2.3.0. To get the latest firmware for your FLIR camera, you need to go onto their website and you have to register your camera. It's not a case of them just having a download and getting the firmware, so you have to go on register. When you register, you can then download it. They've then got a piece of software which will allow you to update it. So all I'm gonna do is load up that piece of software and connect my camera via the USB port at the top here to my PC and then we'll go through with the update. So the software is called FLIR Tools. You've got an option here where it says check for updates. So I'm going to click on that and you'll see here it notes the version on my camera and it notes that there's a later version. 
So I'm going to choose to update, gives me lots of warnings, continue, and it's doing the update. Now I actually downloaded the firmware to my P PC in preparation for this, but I assume what it's doing now is pulling this directly from the website with my credentials. So there we go, download complete start the installation by unplugging the USB cable, right? So that's what I'll do. Oh, there we go. Update is started, do not turn off the camera. Might take several minutes. Now if you recall, I have shown in some videos that my camera actually crashed with an application error. So I'm assuming that's one of the bugs that they've gone and fixed. But again, as I haven't been able to find a change log or a history, I'm not sure what the bug fixes are or the features that might be added. Tell you what I'm gonna do is my arm is getting stiff holding this. I'm gonna move over to the bench so we can see what changes it's made, if any, once it's complete. There we go. Okay, so just as I get the camera to the bench, it says it's completed. You can see the difference over there. So that's that change. Let's go into the menu system. 2.0.3.0, so it's definitely done that. Provides a little more information here. It kind of talks about the lens angle and the power level, which it didn't in my first version of the firmware. So they've still maintained the alignment distance over here on this menu. Again, this, this update came out, I believe, about a year ago. And again, I just wish they would add that feature. It would be so simple if they just added it to the key, uh, toggle key over here. So they've got the MSX technology, thermal, got the blending. Go and change the blending level. And then you've got the pure digital camera. So I can't see any other differences. Let's just check, they haven't added any colors. Got rainbow, gray, and then you can lock your temperature scale on the side. So I honestly don't know what the changes are between 2.1 to 2.3, and that's what I'm keen to know. I assume now if they haven't added any obvious features, because I can't see that, then there must be some bug fixes, and it would be just good to know that. So there we go. If you've been like me and neglected to update your firmware, then it might certainly be a consideration because I guess there might be several bug fixes. Perhaps it prevents that application crash that I've seen a couple of times. And then you get the image blending. I will have to have a look. I think the other camera I've got certainly has a problem with the microbolometer. So it looks like that has to go back to be resolved. If FLIR come back to me with a changelog or history of what they've been doing in those firmware updates, I'll annotate this video or I'll post a link or information below in the details of this one. But anyway, if you gain any value from this video, please give it a thumbs up and I'll catch you soon for the next one. Cheers.